really reminds me. So it says, it's just a little story, up to two minutes, I promise. Grace was wor um, George was working at a construction job in the heat of the summer where somebody's living nearby, walking into the, the industrial park where he was working, clearly very angry, and the man began to curse and criticise him, everything about the project and, he, and everything he's done. Jo George received a verbal blow without response until the angry man stopped and yelled at him. He gently responds, you have a, you've had a really bad day, haven't you? The guy, suddenly, his angry face softened and he dipped his head and said, I'm really, really sorry, I didn't mean to do that. George has shown so much kindness to that guy and it's called a Christ-like response. So when somebody's verbally abusing you or saying really nasty things, take it in, pray a little bit and give kindness out. And he's, he will soften and that's what Jesus did when he was getting bullied and called these names. He didn't scream and shout at somebody, he just gently responded and gave kindness. So that's just a little thought to take with you today. Um, my little notices again. So. Um, Coffee morning on prayer, so please come and join us. <coughs> Bible study was cancelled last week, but we are back, aren't we, Viv? We are back. Um, if you would like to join a Bible study, um, please get in touch. If we get another group, we'll start another one as well. More the merrier. And then be Belly's Not Bins on Thursday, and then Community Breakfast is back. Um, full English. Um, and I think Jacqueline and Victoria, yeah. Oh, Jacqueline, yeah. So anybody, please, everybody welcome. Invite your friends, everyone. It's a really great time to do fellowship. So please come and join us. So, and I'll see you next Sunday. Thanks, Jill. Um, so this morning is a time for honesty, I think, for me. So um, I was struggling with what I was going to say this morning because I've had a difficult week. And I spoke to Johnny and he kind of said, well, just be honest about it. This is our church family. We can be honest about things. So for those of you that don't know, but I think a lot of you know, I really struggle with anxiety. It's so annoying and it's something that um, I've had for a long time. And I, can, I feel quite embarrassed about it at times, really. A, because I'm a Christian, and B, because I work in the mental health profession. And being a Christian, I know... I, I believe God's word. I know what he says. I know that he says not to worry, that he's given me, um, he hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but I still worry and I pray about it all the time, but I still really struggle. So the last couple of months, I could feel it building up. And then last week, I don't know why, but I just had a really, really awful week and I felt really disabled by the anxiety. I've not slept for quite a few days and I ended up spending a load of money on a pillow that guaranteed me to have a perfect night's sleep and Johnny said don't waste your money on this pillow please don't buy this pillow but I bought it and it, I ended up with a crick neck and I didn't have a good <laughs> night's sleep but anyway um three of those sort of this the week that I've had when I've had this awful sense of fear and dread I still talk to God I know he's there I know he's listening and even though I'm, he hasn't healed me yet I believe that he will one day and this week I've really held on to um the Bible verse in Psalm 46 verse 10 you'll all know it be still and know that I am God and I must have repeated it oh I don't know how many times this week just to try and calm myself to try and well, to know that God is there. And I was looking into it a little bit more, and the actual term be still comes from the Hebrew of letting go, to let go. So when we look at it that way, I think it's really powerful to think God is there saying to us, let go, let go and know that I'm God. Let go of your anxiety, let go of any anger that you have, let go of any worries. Know that I'm God and that I'm in control and, and that you're not in control. We think we're in control, don't we? And that's where anxiety comes from. It's, it's wanting to control things. It's wanting to, to know that everything's going to be okay. And it, it's really hard. Um, so I kept, I kept repeating that psalm over to myself. And there's a lot of freedom, I think, in letting go of things, you know, God is um, he's big enough, his shoulders are broad enough to carry all of our fears, all of our worries. You know, you think about the song, cast your cares on his shoulders. You know, Jesus stretched his arms out because they're wide enough to carry them. Um, but one thing I've been doing this week is 
using promises from the Bible um, to ease my anxiety. And God's promises, there's over 7,000 of them in the Bible. So there's, there's hundreds for each of us for every day. And God's promises ease our troubled hearts. And it must have been about 18 years ago, me and Johnny were here and we were dating. And I can't remember what Bob was talking about, but I really felt like God told me I needed to go up to the front and read this um, it's like a love letter from God, which is all promises. I'm not going to read it all today, but I remember just thinking, I, I don't want to come up here and read. But I did it, and I was really nervous. But I'm just going to read a few of them out today. And they're all in the Bible, so you can, you can go away and look at them. They're all true, and they're all for each one of us here today. And everybody listening on YouTube, these are for us. They're from God as a love letter to us. So just a couple of them, um, Psalm 139, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. Um, Jeremiah 32, verse 40, I will never stop doing good to you. Exodus 19, verse 5, for you are my treasured possession. Deuteronomy 4, verse 29, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. One of my favourites, Revelation 21, verse 3 to 4. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes. So these promises are all for us today and for you to take away and, and think about them. And, and when you're struggling with things, go back to God's promises. Have a look at your Bible. See what he says. He speaks good things over us all the time. Um, and when I'm struggling with anxiety, one thing I always want to do is hide away. I struggle coming to church sometimes, but I always come. And one thing I, want, I read this week was um, about coming to church, that we are meant to be here. There's, it's not a coincidence that we've come here today. There's a reason that we're here, whether we believe or we don't believe. So if we don't believe in God or we have doubts about God, come to church. If you're struggling with relationships, with your marriage, with your family, come to church. If you're anxious, if you're angry, if you're worried, come to church. It's the place to be. This is where you're going to find answers. Um, so this morning, I just, I know that God's going to bless us. Even though I've been struggling this week, every day God has blessings for me. And it, and it links in with what Nicola was saying last week and what um, Christine was saying about God's got new blessings for us every day and, and blessings literally fall on me every day. But I I don't always see it when I'm in that anxious state. Um, but God's going to bless you te today. So let's pray um, as we open the service. Lord, we just thank you that we're all here today. And thank you that you're going to speak to us and you're going to bless us, Lord. Thank you that we can come to you about anything and that you're always there. You're always listening. You're always waiting with your arms wide open um, for us just to talk to you about anything. Lord, we just pray for anybody who's not here today who couldn't make it. Um, we pray that you'll still touch them, Lord, and you'll be with them and that they'll know that you're there comfort,ing them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'd like to invite the worship team up. <laughs> Thanks for that, Claire. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're ready to praise the Lord this morning. You're going to um, stand and join us, please. <laughs> Let our praise be your welcome let our songs be a sign that we are here for you we are here for you let your breath come from heaven fill our hearts with your life we are here for you we are here for you to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one desire 
precious blood Who is left will not remember Who can cease to sing His praise And He can never be forgotten Throughout Him's eternal days On the Mount of Crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide Through the flood gates of God's mercy Grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured in sin from above. And there was peace and perfect justice, kiss the guilty world in love. Let me all thy love accept Love the end of all my days. Let me seek thy kingdom only, and my life be to thy praise. Thou alone shall be my glory. Nothing in the world I see. Thou hast cleansed and sanctified. And now thyself has set me free In thy truth thou dost direct me By thy spirit through thy word And thy grace my need is meeting As I trust in thee, my Lord, of thy fullness, thou art glory, thy great love and power of me, without measure, full and boundless, as I yield myself to thee. coming from within our hearts that what we could say to you Lord and we are, we are lost for words well I'm lost for words this morning Lord just how great and awesome you are how loving you are how beautiful you are Lord that you are just an amazing God that has changed and transformed our lives and poured into us Lord some of just a little bit of, of your goodness and your greatness and, and your, your love Lord you've, you've poured that into us and Lord we can't contain it sometimes it's just so good. It is so, thank you 
Thank you this morning, Lord, for revealing to us who you are, for giving us a little glimpse, Lord, into your heavenly glory and splendour. And Lord, I can only say this, Lord, that what it's going to be like when we see you as we really are, we cannot find anything in our, in our vocabulary to explain that. But Lord, we're excited. Lord, we are blessed this morning. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for just bringing me into your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us into your kingdom, into your heavenly kingdom, and just giving us a glimpse in this world of your glory in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you this morning. I praise you. I praise your wonderful name. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Before you, you silence 
the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. our seats. I'm going to come around the table, communion table. But before we do, there's so much in this that, that we don't have time, I don't know. There was a time when Paul preached all night, didn't he, and people were falling out, falling out of windows, and and you, we, could, we could speak all day about, about this and what, what comes to us through. But you know, there's a part of this that says that by stripes we're healed. And, and there are people who need a touch from the Lord, you know. And um, really blessed to, to just be in the presence of God here this morning. But you know, there are people who need a touch from the Lord. And, it, and it's through what he did that we can, we can just receive this morning. Now let's receive, let's receive what you, what you need, what we need. Well, I want to pray for Nev. He's not good. Let's pray for him at all. I want to pray for Ruth. Who's, is, she in, is she in Wales now? Hmm? But he's, uh, her, her father-in-law, whom she's known and loved from being a young girl, is at the point of passing away from this world. And, uh, and that's a difficult time. And we're going to pray that the Lord sustains and supports uh, the Berry family. And, uh, and what else? What else? What else? Do you need a touch from the Lord this morning? Pray for Reuben. Um, Carl telling us it's a bit difficult for Reuben. We're going to pray for Reuben this morning. I'm going to believe, you know, we, we have an amazing God. Do you believe we have an amazing God this morning? We have a God who is able to do more than you can think or ima imagine or ask. So let's just pray for these people. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to pray. And, and you just include your, your prayer in with this. You know, you don't, we don't have to be saying lots of things right now. But let's just take this moment, and I believe that the Lord is here today to hear our prayer and to do some things that are special. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we're preparing to come around your table this morning, we are reminded and remember, Lord, that, it, that you said that by your stripes we are healed. Lord, that means we can come to you with needs and, and requests and things that, that are maybe difficult for us when we can come, Lord, and, and, and just come before you, Lord, with, with humble hearts with believing hearts, full of faith. Lord, I want to pray for Nev this morning, not well. Lord, I pray your healing touch upon him, Lord. This man who's been a faithful servant for many, many, many years, pray this morning, you touch him in Jesus' name. Lord, I want to pray for Reuben as well, Carl and Nadia's young lad. Lord, who, they love him to bits, and it's not easy for them to see him in distressed state. So, Lord, what we're doing, going to do is going to bring Reuben before you this morning. Because you are an amazing God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Pray for Ruth and the family, Lord, who are just in this difficult time, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will sustain and support them. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, anybody else who can put their name in here now, Lord, that they put their name in, Lord, and you reach out and touch them. Because we're reaching out like that woman reached out and touched the hem of your garment. So we are, Lord, in that same faith are going to reach out and touch you. Dave, would you help us do this, please? Matthew, would you please help us? We're just going to pray that as we take this bread and this wine this morning, that it is a special blessing to each one of us. Healing, support, restoration. Let's do this as we take it this morning. this table, Lord, that you're there for us as individuals, as a church family, Lord, to come and, and speak to you and ask for your help and your guidance in all situations. Mm. Thank you, Lord, that you're there for us yesterday, for us today, and you'll be there for us tomorrow. Yeah. Lord, I want to thank you for the sacrifice of, of your son mm. and our salvation. Feel free to express your praise and your thanks to the Lord this morning. privilege for us all to be here, Lord, with um, what you did on, on that day at Calvary, Lord. Lord what, what you did on that day, we couldn't ask for, and we couldn't be here from what you did. So, Lord, we come around your table again, Lord, just remind us about what you did at Calvary, Lord, and the sacrifice for everybody, Lord, in this world. We ask this in your mighty and cross name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. 
Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Dada na shandala yaya. Sore ki shandala ndala yaya. Ki shepa bole yaya. Andala yaya. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, it's Sunday school, so I think the older ones are staying in today, and then the younger ones, I'm not sure who they're going out with. Is it, is it Joy? Is it Bob speaking today? Pray for Bob. Thank you. Lord, we just thank you for Bob, and we know that today we're missing some really vital people in our church. I mean, everybody's really important, Lord, but we notice some of the big characters who aren't here today. And we just thank you that we can bring them to you, Lord, and that, you know, the things they're going through affect us as well because we're one big family, Lord. And mm. we just thank you that we can come to you about anything and that you're listening and you're always working. You never stop working. You never stop doing good mm. um, for all of us, Lord. And we just pray for Bob today that you'll open our hearts and our minds to what he's got to say. And it, we know it comes Amen. from you, Lord, and we know mm. that you want us to listen um, to what he's going to say today. And it'll amen. bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Well, I have to say that, Claire, considering you was talking about anxiety, you do pretty good out here. She, you really are a blessing to us, and God's got a lot of uh, work for you to do for his kingdom. She's going, oh, no, I'm anxious now. <laughs> you know, God takes those people who, who, who feel like they're inadequate and, and the, those, and, and God just, you read through the Bible, isn't it? And everybody who God put his hand on, they, oh, Lord, I'm not, I'm not good enough to do this. You know, can you choose somebody else? But, you know, the amazing thing is that God sees in us the potential that lays there waiting for him to help us to release it. 
and become an amazing blessing to so many people. Well, I've missed being here for the last three weeks and how things have happened and all that, but it is good to be, good to be here, good to be able to sing and praise the Lord and to fellowship with you again today. So I'm really, really blessed to be back. Um, yeah, we missed it. Good to see Janice here. Spent a couple of days with uh, Gavin and Janice in France. And uh, it's great. Thank you for having us over there. If, if you, sorry, I'm not going to ask you. If you feel like a couple of nice days in France, talk to Janice. It's a great. <laughs> <laughs> Got a very big garden, take a tent. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can't express just how amazing it is to know who God is. I, I, I go through it, I think about it, I listen to, to the people talking about it, and I also listen to people who don't believe it. And, uh, and they, they can say some fairly offensive things, you know, about, about God and, and who he is and the Bible, and they can attack it, and they can, and you know, people are, we live in a, an age, don't we, where people are, are free to, to express what they think, uh, and, and so they, they do, and they say some quite offensive things, and you think, wow, you know, but, but deep in my heart, it doesn't shake anything, it doesn't shake the, the truth that has is, that is found its way into my life and into my heart, and I'm just so blessed to know who God is, and I'm sure that you can say in your heart this morning, that I am prayer, I'm blessed to really know the truth and to know by faith. You just, I've just got a couple of little things to say here because I, I start to think about something that I want to share and then I keep going back and say, yeah, but I'm, I should say that before I say this. And then you think, I'll, 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 I'll need to say that before I'm going to say this because I want to, to, you know, to, to introduce it in a certain way. And so I thought, oh, I'll go back to Genesis and start in the beginning and work through the whole thing. How, how long have you got? <laughs> but, you know, by, through, through faith, I, it's, it's just so, such a thing that just moved in my, in my heart, in my life. Through faith, I know it all started. And in Hebrews, it says, by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. At God's command. It was God's command. It wasn't anything else. It was God's command that, that, and what we see now did not come from anything that can be seen. So by faith, I know how it all started. And so I'm blessed to know this morning that God has put in my heart the truth and understanding to know how it all started. <coughs> and it is by faith because, as I've said before, none of us were there. Were you there? Were you there when it started? None of us were there. But it is through faith today that we believe that we understand that the entire universe was formed by God's command. So in knowing God, I know that. And I'm at peace with that. And, I, and it's just a blessing. I'm also blessed to know this morning, and I've had it explained to me through the word of God, that there was a problem. And the problem was this, and it says it in Romans chapter 3. Just let me have a quick <clears throat> just drink. drink. I'm blessed to know God because I have had it explained to me in Romans chapter 3 and it says, For everyone has sinned and fall short of God's glorious standard. I've had that explained to me. And so in doing that, the next part of that verse says, Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ. He did it through him and he has freed us from the penalty of our sins. So I haven't got time to go into all of these, but there's a few Bible studies that could come out of what we say, what I want to say this morning. And that's so, I'm blessed this morning to know who God is because he's explained to me that the, the, where it all started, the sin, how it can be dealt with. And not only that, I'm blessed this morning to know this, <clears throat> that by his divine power, God has given us everything we need to live a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and excellence. Praise his wonderful name this morning, that God has given us everything that we need. And I think uh, Claire was, was saying some of those things this morning. 
<coughs> I'm listening to what she's saying about how God has helped her with the, in the situations. And God blesses her and gives her things from her word. Because when you have a need, God gives you what you, he said he has given us everything that we need. So you can stand on that promise this morning. How many promises did you say there were? 7,000. 7, <clears throat> and so here's another one to, to, to put into that, into that 7,000. That he has given us everything that we need. Can I remind you this morning that you have everything that you need to live the godly life that God has called you to. And not only that, I am so blessed this morning to know who God is. <clears throat> because in Jude chapter 1, it, it, it says in verse 24, it says, Not now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. So can I just remind you this morning that if you put your faith and your trust and your confidence in God this morning, that he will keep you from falling. And it says, all glory to him alone is God, our Saviour through Jesus Christ our Lord, and authority is given to him before all time and in present and beyond all time. He will present you before the Father in heaven, spotless, without fault. So the Lord is able to keep you. So if you put your trust in him this morning, he is able to keep you from falling. Praise his wonderful... I'm glad. I am so glad. I know the Lord in my life this morning. And that really... <coughs> Just, just introduces what, 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 why I know God. Actually, Claire read a, a verse this morning, and I think I might have the same verse in Revelation chapter 21 of all the books that you could choose to read from. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, and it said, I heard a loud voice shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He'll live with them. They'll wipe, they will, they will, uh, he will, sorry, he will live with them. They will be his people. God will be with them. He will wipe every tear. You said that this morning. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain and all these things are gone forever. So I've just quickly covered the whole spectrum of where it started, where the problem lay, how it's resolved, the power that you've got to live the life, where we're going and spotless before the throne in heaven and then you'll spend your eternity with God in heaven. That just kind of covers a massive spectrum of the whole life and, and that sums up to me why I'm so glad I know Jesus. A few weeks ago I was thinking about a few things. I drive, when I, I, I drive around and you know, pray and, and just wait, wait upon the Lord so often and the Lord put four clear words into my mind. And uh, I, want to, I want to, and I've just used that to introduce really what I want to say about the four words. Because these four words are love, joy, peace, and contentment. And as I, as I pondered and thought and gone through those things, and I said, Lord, what do you want to say? What do you want to say to me through these words? And, and I started to, to ponder on it and think upon it and meditate upon it and, and came to this, this, this conclusion that the Lord is just through those words, and I'm going to talk about love. I'm going to talk about love today. But through those words, he has given me a tiny glimpse into the treasure and truth of who he is and what he can do in his promises that are found in his word. How he has transformed our lives. He has transformed my life. Countless millions around the world both to today we're in the world and right back through the time till Jesus was in the earth. <coughs> he has been transforming lives. And these, these four words have just given me a little more of a glimpse and I want to think and meditate upon these words. Some people dismiss this whole thing as a fairy tale. It's all made up. Well, I can, I can just say this, that those who would dismiss all of these things that I'm saying this morning as a fairy tale, more than likely I've never tasted and seen just how good it is to have God in your life. And that is my testimony this morning, that, that God, and I listened to somebody quite recently who, who was very vehemently attacking all that they said in, in the Bible, and, uh, and I just thought, you know, Lord, people can say the most outrageous things, but they can never take away the transformation of power that took place in my life when I came to know you. And these things are the reality of my life.
Anyway, that was just an introduction, really, to one to one to, to, to just talk about for a few minutes. So many people, the minute they set foot through that door there, they say there's something special here in this place. Well, it's hard to explain that. Have you, have you has, has anybody here who's, who's, you don't have to show me, but just a question that you can ans answer yourselves. When you walk through that door, you think, there's something special about this place. There's something different. There's something that moves in your heart. Well, this is, I'm going to try and explain what that is. I'm going to try and explain why, when, when people walk through that, our front door of our church, that they get that sense that there's something special. And it's this. That if you take a group of people, whom we are, who have put their trust in the Lord and, and, and experienced those things that I said at the beginning, and those things have come into your life and changed and transformed your, your thinking, your understanding, your, objection, your objectives, you know, your, your direction, of everything that you think and everything that you, that you do is now focused on who God is in your life. And if you take a group of people and you put them together, special things start to happen. And I really believe that, that there is a group of very special people in this church. That's us here today. You know, you are the church. We, we talk about the church. You're the church, you know. This, this is a, the building is bricks and mortar. And, and, and there, is, there, is, I know, there is an element that this is a church, isn't it? This, this is a church. Just to digress a little bit, there's a sense of sadness in my heart <clears throat> at seeing more and more churches across our nation closing. And there are many closing churches and things are changing. And I would pray, I would say, Lord, let no more churches close in our country. But Lord, when you said you'll pour out your spirit upon all flesh, could we say, Lord, pour out your spirit upon people in our nation so that the churches are not stopping closing, but they're starting, let there be something that starts to stir in our country. In fact, I'm going to pray right now because I want to pray that... that when, I, when you drive around and you see another church that's closed and, and it, there's a sense of sadness comes, comes into my heart, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to pray for our country, pray for our nation. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, that, that its, its heritage has been amazing, but Lord, let its future be even more amazing. Lord, I pray that you will raise people up in this country, Lord, who will preach and teach the truth of who you are. Lord, I pray that, that the churches, Lord, will see a turnaround in the people who are going there. Lord, I'm praying that you will pour out your spirit, Lord, in, in our country. Lord, I'm praying that the leaders, the spiritual leaders of our nation, Lord, will receive a fresh anointing and the power of the spirit can come upon them, Lord, and that they can be inspired, Lord, to preach the truth and, Lord, and talk about Jesus, who is the saviour of the world, Lord, who can bring people out of their situations and set them on a secure footing. And, Lord, bring the... Tr Bring that peace, Lord, and that joy that I want to talk about into there. So, Lord, I'm praying this morning, Lord, that we will see a turnaround in, in, in our nation, Lord, and we will see a stop of the churches closing, and, Lord, we'll start to see the pouring, outpouring of your Spirit upon those people, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, if you take a group of people whom we are, put them together, then special things start to happen and I'm going to try and explain it and to me it is it is simple I'm going to say I'm trying I'm going to explain it but it's simple we've received God's love we have received God's love and it has overflowed into our lives Jesus said this and so now I'm going to give you a new commandment love each other just as I have loved you and you should love each other your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. You know, I'm saying these things this morning. I'm, I'm exhorting us to continue to love, but I really believe that there is a love between people in our fellowship that is extraordinary. I believe that God has put a love in our hearts that, that overflows and touches people. And that love of God is kind of, I don't know, it, it, it's got into the fabric of this place. It, it's got us so when we walk in, 
Sometimes I walk into church and there's nobody here, there's nobody else here, but I just get a sense of the peace of God in the place. I just get a sense that God's blessed us, us to be here. And, and so I really, I'm saying this morning that I believe that the love of God from heaven has overflowed into our lives. And take that, what Jesus said, to love one another. I believe the love of God is in this place and it's touched our lives. And it touches people when they walk through our door. In Peter, it says this, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. Ah, oh, praise his wonderful name this morning. The love of God. I, if, if you want to, if you want to uh, try and understand the love of God, read those the three epistles of John. And, and he, just, he just puts it into an amazing way. But you know, uh, who's heard of Bill Gaither? Bill Gaither wrote a song. And, and he tried to put into words the love of God. Can I just read, the, read you the, the lyrics of that song? It says, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless <coughs> and strong, it shall forever endure, the saints and angels sing. Verse 3 says this, and it was a few times I'd listened to this until I realised what it was actually saying. But it said, could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry, nor could the scrolls contain the whole through stretched from those stretched from sky to sky. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, he shall forever endure. The saints and angels sing. What a beautiful expression to describe the love of God. And that love of God has come to dwell within our lives and within our hearts. Peter said this, sympathize with each other, love one another, be tender hearted and keep a humble attitude, love one another. And he, then he went on to say this, and this is a, this is a really good thing to realize. He said, most of all, continue to show deep love for each other. For love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Love one another. Love one another. I'm, I'm glad that that verse is in there, covers a multitude of sins. I'm not perfect. I'm not easy to love, but I want you to love me, and I want to love you. And when that love of God gets stronger and stronger with, between us, then the level of specialness that people, when people walk through the door, only goes from strength to strength. And in Peter, he says this, he said, I want you to make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a general provision of moral excellence and excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control, self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. You know what he's doing? He's exhorting people here to love one another. And it's easy to love nice people, isn't it? It's easy to love the, you know, the, the, the people who are, who, who are nice and friendly to you. But, but what, what we used to do, you're saying to Jill this morning, you're saying return them with kindness. You know, when people say things that are not very nice, then return them with kindness. And you can do that because the love of God is living and dwelling within each one of us. In John, it says, don't merely say that you love each other, but let us show it by our actions. You know, we show the love of God 
by our actions. And I really praise the Lord that this church is a church of actions. This church is a church that really demonstrates the love of God. And, uh, and it's just, and that, that's, what, that's what speaks into people's hearts. That's what speaks into people's lives. You know, I'm just praising the Lord this morning in my heart because I have experienced his love. He's put his love within my heart. And I pray that his love goes from strength to strength in us and in his church here. And uh, I just finish with this. And I want to pray that you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though this is too great to understand fully. Though you, th then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Yes, it is sometimes quite difficult to understand when you talk about the love of God. But you know, it just when you feel something, what could I, how can I explain it? When you feel something that moves you inside, when something really lights up, when it's warm, when, there, when there's something that, that really overrules how you feel about something and something starts to be replaced by the love of God. And then we can share the love of God. How wide, how deep. <coughs> <coughs> How long is his love? Well, I'll tell you this morning. It's amazing. Can I encourage you this morning? Think about it. Pray about it. Lord, fill me more and more with your love. That then I can also demonstrate your love. When people walk through our door and they say there's something special in this place, how about that going from strength to strength? How about that reaching further than the door? How about that reaching further up and down the street? How about that reaching out into this area? How about the love of God being tangible? How about the love of God be making changes to people's lives? How about the love of, because it's the love of God that draws people to himself. It's the love of God that brings people into his kingdom. And it's that kingdom that we have experienced this morning. How amazing is it? The love of God. And so the four things the love, the joy, the peace, and the contentment. So the love, think about it, meditate upon it, and I'm sure that God will start to say more to you about his love, and in so, we can love more and more people. And you know, it says that we'll, we, they'll know that we love God by the way we love one another. That is something that is amazing, something that is a blessing, something that speaks louder than words. Let the love of God dwell in our hearts today. Praise his wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Before I finish... I want us to uh, pray for John and Sheila. Can I pray for you this morning? Because we were talking before about people who have needs and that. And let's, when, it blesses me. You know, when, when someone has a need and we put something out on, 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 our, on our church prayers app, you know, and people respond and say, we're praying, we're praying. We're praying because we love you. We're praying because you're part of God. We're praying because God's put something in our hearts that reaches out to you in your, in your time of need. And also vice versa, when you're in your time of need, there are people who reach out to you and demonstrate and show the love of God. So I, I, can I just pray? Because I, 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 without going into, I know that John and Sheila have got a lot of medical and physical needs going on with your family. And so I, I want us to show the love of God. Can we pray for you this morning? You know, and maybe if you've got something that you you pray for me as well, you know, because the love of God's in this place and we can reach out to you and pray and support and, and let that love of God be flowing between one another here this morning. So I'm going to pray for, for John and Sheila. If anybody else that can pray with you, uh, I don't know what they're up to, but I'm going to pray with you. Because I think you mentioned a few times we need to pray with their family. Because it's the family of God here. So praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. Lord, that you're, you, you're sometimes, you're, it's your ways that, that you work are past finding out yet, Lord. We, we just find John and Sheila, Lord, with us in our fellowship here, Lord, and we feel and sense, Lord, that we want to show your love and your support and your prayers around them this morning. Lord, I pray that you will reach into their lives, Lord, in all, all the situations that's going on medically, Lord, and with their family and daughter, Lord, we, we bring them before you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that there was something extraordinary happening. Lord, you are an extraordinary God. Lord, and we, are, we want to have extraordinary faith here to believe 
God, that you'll be doing some extraordinary things in this situation. So, Lord, we bring them before you this morning, and we pray, Lord, that you'll be doing some great things, and we will hear testimony, Lord, of how you have been at work in this situation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. pray for you yeah, pray. yeah lord we just want to pray again lord for for matthew lord and his family this morning and uh, matthew's granddad lord we just pray lord you'll strengthen and sustain the family lord and that uh, that uh, dave lord will just pass peacefully lord and i just give you praise for that amen 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 yep thanks for that bob I don't think we can leave here today without feeling loved, can we? There's so much love in our church, and it's like Bob said, there is something so special about it. I think there's a lot of characters here, a lot of, you know, people who make me laugh. (laughs) And I think we all kind of just work, don't we? And that's because God is here, God is working within us and wants to work through us and reach everybody. Um, And I was just reading before, I think it was Isaiah... 46 and it talks about God will be our God throughout our whole lifetime and it's something about until we our hairs are gray some of us have got starting getting gray already but um he will he will be there till the end and he'll carry us through to the end and it's remembering that and knowing that um Jesus has done the work for us we don't have to you know we don't have to worry about things and I need need to tell myself that (laughs) more often, but God loves us and that's enough and it's huge and, you know, we can do amazing things because of that. So I just pray this week that we have a really blessed week and we go out there and we love God and we love people Mm -hmm. because that's what it's all about. It's about our relationship with God and I've said it before, the Bible, it's a love letter to us. It's a love letter of how much God loves us and he wants that relationship with us. So I hope you have a great week this week. Um, and I invite the worship team up. Are we doing an offering? Yeah, an offering as well. Thank you.
Okay, uh, would you like to stand and join us for this last song, please?
um, and we just pray you would go with us uh, as we go out, out from this place in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we've got uh, tea and toast over in the side room. Have a good week, everyone. Oh, we have a birthday. Sorry, is is Hayden here? Yes. Yeah. It's been a while since we've had someone on show. Well done, well done, Hayden. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Hayden. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord. Bless you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good Lord bless you, may the good.